So a new Rasmussen poll has come out just uh, I think it's just out this morning that has Trump down nationwide by one point. Obviously, a big, big closing of the gap. And Rasmussen has been pretty accurate. Rasmussen is usually a little bit more favorable to the Republicans, and that makes them more accurate because the other polls uh, skew left. If this is true, and it's still an outlier poll, it's still uh, most other polls still have them four to eight points a, uh, apart. But if it's true, it explains this panic you're seeing in among the Democrats. It is absolutely intolerable for them. They can't do anything about the fact that the Republicans are on display. They're talking to us. Unless you go to CNN or MSNBC or one of the other leftist uh, outlets, you can see what they're saying. You can see the argument they're making. You can see what they're talking about. And if you're online, you can see your country burning down no matter how they, even if it's fiery, but it's peaceful. I mean, how stupid the CNN think you are. Really, really. I mean, they must think that you want so badly to believe what they're selling that you are willing to believe it even in, uh, even when it's right in front of your own eyes. On ABC, I love this exchange. This is the problem with the riots for them, right? These are riots that are terrorizing ordinary people. These are riots that are destroying the law and order of our country. These are riots that have been inspired by the left, that are condoned by the left. They make little gestures when the polls look bad. They make little gestures about maybe you shouldn't be rioting so much. But let's face it, they haven't taken strong action. They haven't allowed Trump to come in. Trump has made offers now in Wisconsin. They finally accepted some help from him so he can send in some federal agents and federal troops. Listen to what they're really worried about. This is ABC Cut 4. I saw a video today that struck me. It was it was a white business owner of a pizzeria in Wisconsin that that had been uh, destroyed. Uh, it, it looked like it, all the glass had been broken, and he was pleading with the protesters, the demonstrators, screaming at them, "Do you want to reelect Trump?" Essentially saying, mm-hmm. "You know, you're going to essentially fire up the other side." Do you, do you think that's the case? Could that happen? Is there a danger here? Uh, I saw that video, and I, and I think there is a, a danger. <laughs> danger to the press is that Trump will be reelected. Not that your house and business will burn down. Not that you'll be mugged in a restaurant or terrorized and bullied in a restaurant. That's not the problem. The danger is a real danger here. Trump could be, we could lose the election. We Democrats could lose the election. Christy Nome, the first woman president of the United States to be, uh, I love Christy Nome. I think she is the best governor in the country. Now, I have to s- qualify this by saying she's governing a state with six people in it. She's the governor of South Dakota. There's like, you know, seven, eight people in there. But she is the one who said, I'm not passing any mandates or laws about masks or closing your business. Do the right thing. Here are the facts that we know. Act in a safe manner. And they did. And they came out of it very well, or at least uh, Right now, they're coming out of it very well. Didn't hurt their economy as much. She has been absolutely great. She says, I trusted the people. The people trusted me. So she made a speech at the Republican convention yesterday, and she described what's going on in the cities quite bluntly. Cut to. It took 244 years to build this great nation, flaws and all. But we stand to lose it in a tiny fraction of that time if we continue down the path taken by the Democrats and their radical supporters. From Seattle and Portland to Washington and New York, Democrat-run cities across this country are being overrun by violent mobs. The violence is rampant. There's looting, chaos, destruction, and murder. People that can afford to flee have fled. But the people that can't, good, hardworking Americans, are left to fend for themselves. (laughs) That was too much honesty for the press. Rachel Maddow on MSNBC cuts away to fact check. This is cut six. Governor Nome just said from Seattle and Portland to Washington and New York, Democrat run cities across this country are being overrun by violent mobs. The violence is rampant. There's looting, chaos, destruction, murder. People that can afford to flee have fled. Um, Joining us for more on that and to essentially run a reality check on that assertion uh, is the mayor of the great city of Seattle, Jenny Durkin, who's joining us on short notice. And her caricature of the great cities across America is not only wrong, it's purposefully wrong. It's Jenny Durkin, the mayor of Seattle, to fact check Christine Nome. Here's what Jenny Durkin said about the violence when they took over a, an entire section of her city. Here's what she said about that. This is cut 27. We've got four blocks in Seattle that you just saw pictures of that is more like a block party atmosphere. It's not an armed takeover. It's not a military junta. 
Um, we will we will make sure that we can restore this. But we have block parties and, and the like in this part of Seattle all the time. It's it's known for that. It's going to turn out to be the summer of love, she said. That was just before the city council voted to defund, partially defund the police and their chief of police, who was admired and respected by everybody. What was her name? Carmen. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, let me see if I wrote it down. Yeah, it was Carmen Best. Uh, she she resigned. <laughs> Jenny Durkin is coming on. They're not burning your city. No, it's a summer of love. It's great. It's <laughs> Terrific. So now they have this uh, this a new video. This guy, Kyle Rittenhouse, is like a 17 year old traveled from somewhere in Illinois to go to Wisconsin with a with a gun. Uh, he obviously he said he was there to help the police. He obviously loved the police and uh, he was cleaning up graffiti. He's now under arrest for murder. He has shot several people. Uh, one of them, there's one video of him being chased before he opens fire. It's cut 20. So he's it's it, he's being chased down the street and finally he's knocked down. He turns and opens fire. The guy who was killed is a guy named Joseph Rosenbaum, is a registered sex offender for having sex for some sexual incident with a minor. But they're branding this guy as a white supremacist, as a militia member. We just don't know. Again, we don't know. I'm not passing judgment on him. I'm not saying he's a great guy. I'm not saying he, you know, because we don't know what happened before he was being chased. We don't know if he was being chased because he opened fire. We don't know what's going on. You know, it's like we we have no I, idea. That's what makes the press so bad. That's what makes the press so evil. I have no idea. They have no idea. This is the thing. You don't get justice through riots. You get justice through courts. I mean, I know it's frustrating and I know it doesn't always work, but that's how you get justice. You get justice through professional investigators investigating, going before a court and juries deciding. That's how you get justice. What is this about? What is it about? And, you know, I just I, this whole idea they, there's Jake Tapper. I love Jake Tapper's reaction. He's afraid that we're not being nice to the looters. I love this. This is cut 25. We've known that this was going to break uh, throughout the night, and I wondered if that was going to temper at all some of the language we have heard from Republican officials talking about the mob, talking about these protesters uh, in very dehumanizing ways. This individual, if he is guilty, he is responsible for his crimes, not any of the individuals he supports, including President Trump. But the idea that a supporter of President Trump is accused of killing protesters last night Jeez, it's, it's Trump's fault, essentially. They're dehumanizing. They're dehumanizing these guys, he says. They're dehumanizing these rioters, this mob. And here is the big one. This is the big one. Somebody pulled this. Someone from Vox pulled this on me, too. This is the thing they really want to sell. And I hear some of the never Trumpers saying this as well. This is Anderson Cooper's reaction. Cut 24, because he knows they can't hide this anymore. They've been trying their best. It's been mostly peaceful, fiery, but mostly peaceful, mostly unarmed. They're doing their best, but now people see it and they're seeing it during the convention. So they have something to compare it with. Here's Anderson Cooper selling the party line. Cut 24. The, the vice president is saying, and a quote, we will have law and order on the streets of America. Uh, future tense. We will have it. Um, but this is the Trump's America. I mean, he has been now in power. It is if the vice president and the president are talking as if they are just observers to what is going on, as if they are the inc uh, they are uh, running to unseat the sitting president and vice president. They are the pre this is the administration. This is their vision for America. This is a this is a bogus argument. It, it may sell to some people because people don't think about what the reality is and people don't know that much about stuff about the way the country works. But this is a federal system. Trump just can't always go marching into other people's states and with armies. He can't do it. And the minute he did it, Anderson Cooper would be the first guy on the air calling him a fascist. You know it. I know it. It's obviously true. When he did it before in Portland, they blamed him for the violence as if the violence hadn't been there before and if, as if it didn't get worse afterward, which nobody reported. Trump is, in, Trump is in a bit of a bind. I wish you were a little bit more aggressive myself. I, I do. 
But still, this is a federal system. This is the Democrats selling this. They've been selling it for a long time. A cop gets killed. I mean, a cop kills somebody and they immediately assume the cop is guilty. They spread the violence. When this when this shooting happened in Kenosha, they said that the Washington Post reported, oh, man, you know, man shot in back while children watch. They didn't wait to find out if he had a knife. They didn't wait to find out what the story was. They rushed to judgment and then they inspire this violence. And then it's Trump's fault. It's a wonderful thing to sell. You're going to have to be pretty stupid to buy it, though. Thank you for tuning into The Daily Wire, one of the fastest growing conservative media outlets in the country. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our content.